technology. Let's go ahead and cover technology and what's been happening in the world of tech. So, oh, hold on a second. little werewolves near me. I don't know. Okay, technology. <laughs> I'm in a very calm state of mind. I could walk quietly, but heck, I'm sure you'd have fun, but let's just, you know, technology. So I'm going to be talking about Tesla full self-driving uh, and, and Bitcoin mostly. Um, just as their technology has improved and changed and we'll cover some other things. Uh, all the things that Elon does is super crazy, but let's go ahead and cover some of these things now with Bitcoin shorter. So we'll cover that first Bitcoin. Um, they are implementing some new changes to Bitcoin, which allow them or get them closer to being able to implement smart contracts. Now changes with Bitcoin happen so incredibly rarely. It takes like two or the, the ones that got implemented today, they've been working on for the last four years are longer. And that's usually about how long it takes for Bitcoin to uh, uh, adjust and change is whenever someone says, why don't we do this thing? About four years later, they might do the thing. And that's because it's an open source, untrusted project where no one can force a change into the software everyone has to want it like virtually everyone has to want it and that's why changes take like four years so that's one thing that's occurred uh, smart contracts which is like the type of stuff you see on ethereum the lightning network has uh been getting into bitcoin lately and so that's also like a smart contract type of a bitcoin and so once bitcoin gets these things really going which i don't know Everyone thought it happened like six years ago and it's taken a long, long, long time for anything to really come of it. And even though people might say it's gonna happen this year, it might be four more years from now before anything happens. But these things allow Bitcoin to like swap tokens on and off. Like you, you use Bitcoin to get a different crypto coin, like uh, I'll just say Tether, and the, which is like a dollar value coin. It's just a coin that tries to maintain a dollar that you can send global. So that's coming up with Bitcoin. Who, who knows if these things will make a huge improvement in the network, but they will be able to currently, um, Bitcoin, uh, about four years ago, Bitcoin could handle 2000 transactions on the network every 10 minutes. Uh, today, Bitcoin can handle about 4,000, 5,000 transactions on the network every 10 minutes. And with these new pieces of technology, Bitcoin can handle 6,000 transactions on the network every 10 minutes. So that is making the fees cheaper, making Bitcoin able to sustain a large volume of transactions over the network. Um, and you can always do things like bundle and combine and then lightning smart contract your transactions in. And once these things get implemented fully, then uh, like you could basically put unlimited number of transactions on the network through uh, combining it with all these other little things. So that's one thing that's gone on with Bitcoin. Another thing is that PayPal uh, has joined up with Bitcoin and Square Cash App has joined up with Bitcoin. So now if you have money on PayPal and Square, you can buy and sell Bitcoin and maybe you pay a very small fee and it doesn't use up one of the Bitcoin, like 6,000 slots. And uh, you could buy, sell bit, uh, Bitcoin on that. And then whenever you transfer that Bitcoin to your own wallet, that's where you can keep custody of it on your computer. Until then it's owned by, it's, it's like deposited on a PayPal Cash App account, obviously. 
But now with Bitcoin, for those who don't know, you uh, you keep your money on your own machine and it's global. There's no FBI money laundering service that like tries to track your money. They don't protect your money. It's all your responsibility. And you make a something called a private key, which is like a, a word file. You make this word file and you store it on your computer, a UBS, a UBS drive, like a thumb drive. You store it on two or three machines at the same time, never the same machine. You never send it over email. You never store it online. You never want it to go through the internet at any point in time ever. And that's, um, that's like uh, your own bank, some people call it, or your private key to Bitcoin. And that lets you, it's the only way to manage money worldwide that uh, no one can, no one tracks and knows that it's you. And then um, now if you do need to send it on email, you can send it in two or three different emails. Like maybe you post half of your private key on Facebook and then you post the other half of your private key on Twitter, on a random Twitter, like not even your own Twitter. And then you combine those two things and now you have the full private key and that way you don't even need to carry the key with you when you go to uh, the Caribbean island to, um, to, avoid your, uh, to avoid the ever-growing power of the lawman or Puerto Rico. Everybody's going to Puerto Rico if you're an American because um, you don't have capital gains if you live in Puerto Rico, long-term capital gains. And that can, if you're in retirement, that can save you like 100000 50000 a year in taxes. So... Okay, now, um, and there's reasons that you don't want to have too much money in a 401k. That's a different issue. I'm not going to worry about it. So, um, that's some tech with Bitcoin that has, uh, another thing that's changed with Bitcoin is that uh, corporations on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, they are moving all their uh, cash reserves into Bitcoin. And then corporations on the London Stock Exchange are moving all their cash reserves into Bitcoin. That means that they're buying Bitcoin. And um, that's part of the reason that Bitcoin has gone from 10,000 to 13,000. And then uh, in the last month, and then um, it, the objective, people hope it goes to 30,000. Maybe it goes way more, but people hope it goes to 30,000. We need about $6 billion of investments in order for Bitcoin to get to like $30,000 of new investments this year, which basically most your NASDAQ corporations, like they might be, all the ones combined might be sitting on like 2 trillion cash deposits, like Square alone, who's already moved some of their money into Bitcoin. They're sending, they're sitting on, I think they're sitting on $10 billion of cash. And so, if they move all of their money into Bitcoin, it's going to go from like thirteen to thirty thousand, um, most likely. So, if there's a few other corporations who all move five percent, twenty others move five percent of similar size, or Square moves all their money, then uh, that's how Bitcoin moves up. And Bitcoin, like mentioned before, it's one of it's like the only global asset aside like gold, but it's one of the only global assets. And so the New York uh, so the London companies can do this, the Saudi Arabian companies and uh, princes can do this, the Chinese uh, Republican Party or whatever uh, can do this. So it's a shared global asset and as Bitcoin uh, changes and develops, then you have a one, you have an entire world united in one common objective of increasing the value of Bitcoin, protecting the value of Bitcoin. So that's, uh, I think that covers, I, th I think that covers everything with Bitcoin. Um, so, oh, 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 uh, last thing with Bitcoin is that every presidential election, the issuance rate of Bitcoin gets cut in half. Right now it's 1.8, but 2%, uh, 2024 in that presidential election will go down to 1%. And then in the presidential election after that, it'll go down to 0.5%. And so um, that makes that basically bit, makes Bitcoin more scarce. 
it makes it easier for it to like double in value each time that occurs. And so the anticipation is that Bitcoin will have a value of at least 15,000 bucks. This presidential election cycle, it's currently at 13. And then next presidential election cycle, it'll have a value of $30,000. So that's a doubling every four years, which is a 19% rate of return. And that's why I choose to hoard a large portion of my money like the corporations do on the stock exchanges in Bitcoin. I, I do like they do. And then um, that's about all you need to know. I, I, I hope you get involved in Bitcoin in one world current, like a collective reserve currency. You'll probably never have a collective dollar coin, but you'll have a collective, unless it's the US dollar, at least as it looks right now, but you'll have a collective uh, reserve currency, which is very natural, which will be Bitcoin, gold, something. Okay, now on to Tesla. Tesla um, has released, and I'll just cover all Elon. Tesla has released full self-driving in the super, super, super incredibly awesome mode. Tesla has released full self-driving in the super, super incredibly awesome mode. Previously, Tesla could barely drive down the interstate. Today, literally overnight, literally overnight, Tesla can drive um, all around the city, um, stop at cars. It can, um, I mean, stop at traffic lights, go on a roundabout. Okay, I am actually near the turnaround point. I see. So I'm gonna, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go to the mountaintop or not. Um, um, hmm. Hell. Let's do it. Let's at least get halfway up. So, um, uh, so it can stop at stop signs, make left-hand turns at a traffic light, drive on unmarked roads, avoid bicyclists, avoid road construction, um, uh, be summoned from a parking lot and uh, come to your door if it's like flooding or raining. Um, it can go, like they say, I will just use the phrase door to door, but it can go from parking lot to parking lot all by itself. Yeah, that's accurate. Like it can go from parking lot to parking lot all by itself at this time, which uh, a lot of young drivers will probably never learn how to drive a car. And so Tesla will have like a monopoly on all young drivers who can't drive anything but a Tesla. You'll see a lot less deaths of young drivers who own a Tesla, the safest vehicle in the world. You'll see um, a lot less drunk driving accidents and accidents because you're high, eating a hamburger, talking on the phone, trying to do work, getting business calls, breaking up with your girlfriend, emotionally irate, coming back from a hospital visit, uh, doped up on morphine, because you have a heart attack while you're driving, you'll see uh, many, many, many lives saved by these self-driving vehicles. I know I mentioned in another video, I have a fella, he had a minor heart attack on the road, which caused him to crash his car and subsequently die because of the amount of time it took for um, his crashed vehicle and the ambulance to come rescue him. In a Tesla full self-driving vehicle, he could have, and if, for those who don't know, you can't keep control of your motor functions when you have a heart attack. Your feet will extend and, and spaz out like a person who gets concussed in boxing, and your arms will long, get, they'll fully extend and um, you can't keep control of the, of the steering wheel. It's not a mind over matter issue. It's like your body will seize up. And it'll just happen for about 20 seconds or a minute. And then if you can recover in that time and you don't subsequently crash your car, you can reprogram it to go to the hospital and save your own life without an ambulance. And actually live, because you won't live if you call an ambulance. And it, they won't get there in time probably. So, um, 
So that's one of the things that's happening. And that's a huge benefit to the world, which is why I care about it. Um, a lot less pedestrians and bicyclists getting hit by vehicles. Um, there's so many... It, it makes me... It always makes me so happy when life is protected. It makes me very happy when life is protected. Um, I invest in these technologies. These are the ones I care about, both emotionally and also I think that they have good growth opportunity. Um, but the recklessness at which we treat life in general, human life, disgusts me. So, makes me sad. I know, I know we can't change it. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to cry or whatever, but I'm just saying like, you gotta, you gotta put a stop to the recklessness and the, the murder of young kids who like don't understand the consequence of wrecks and uh, the, the, who don't gauge properly their, um, their mental state when they uh, like smoke some pot and maybe it takes four hours for the pot to come off and they have to drive because they have to go to work or see their parents um, goofing around. Uh, just doesn't make me happy. So um, Tesla will fix that. And right now it costs 10,000 bucks to do that. He'll eventually allow a subscription service. And one day it'll probably cost 20,000 bucks. But right, it's still very reasonable. And you can get a cheap Tesla car for $35,000. Dollars, uh, brand new, which is still a lot of money, I understand, but they have held their value. A Tesla car that's like two years old costs as much as a brand new one, practically, if it's a Model 3. So, um, anyways, so that's some big change in Tesla. Um, other than that, they've made like another like 10% more miles and like 5% reduce, reduction of price, but that's less on the techno technological front. But these are investment opportunities. Um, most of your like global power money brokers don't invest in, in new technology that's unproven. And I find the Tesla beta full self-driving to be, oh my God, so great. And oh man, it's a great view though. I love hills. I really don't like walking on flat land. Hills, that's the money. Hills are the money. So, um, but yeah, uh, the, uh, your global power brokers don't invest in new technologies usually. And so you can make an absurd num amount of profit by investing in them. And I do that with Tesla all the time. And the full self-driving happened just last weekend and it's gonna blow the pants off any clown who doesn't get it. <laughs> okay, so um, other Elon technologies, his uh, Starlink is coming into play, which is a global satellite. And, and some things that you wanna do is think about technologies that are transforming Earth, not uh, selling a product. Technologies that transform Earth, they're not selling a product. So, um, uh, Elon's, uh, Elon's Starlink satellite is, uh, it's coming into a swing and you can now use it in Washington state. You can use it in Canada and probably in about a year, you'll be able to use it in, uh, New York and Tennessee. And then about a year after that, you'll be able to use it all over the world. So you're talking about 2020 three where it's worldwide 2022 when it covers like 50% of earth or 50% of the population. Oh, and so, um, that technology is just, uh, that technology is just, uh, increasing in power. Now the it's a hundred megabits a second. Uh, my cousin out here in Damascus, West Virginia gets three megabits a second and he pays 50 bucks a month for it. Starlink is global, 100 megabits a second. And so um, it's going to make living in rural areas 
substantially more uh, accommodating than it's been. And so you'll see a diffusion of city power as people move to the rural countryside where they should live and they get closer to nature and they're not uh, within the smog of the, of the city life. So uh, that's what's startling. And then you have, um, and then you have, um, uh, let's see what else he's done. I mean, his rockets, his ro uh, Starship, which can, I think it can carry a hundred tons and 1,000 people, 1,000 astronauts to space. And I think that just got assembled last weekend. So that will probably be ready around June of 2021, so about six months. Now you can't invest in Starlink or Starship unless you're an accredited investor. You can only invest in Tesla uh, if you want Elon profits. And then um, another thing that Elon said he's gonna work on is creating an air conditioning system that's also a water purification system. So he wants an air conditioning system that uh, in a help HEPA filter. So he wants an air conditioning system that uh, eliminates all pollutants out of the air that it pumps into the house, that eliminates pollutants from the air that are in the house, that filtrates water that falls from the sky for you, and also, um, and, and is a water heater, so I, I assume. So, when you combine Starlink, which is global internet, when you combine, uh, and the solar roofs have fallen in, in price by about 50%. So what used to cost you $60,000 for a solar roof is now $30,000. And a solar roof is not panels on top of an existing roof. A solar roof is a ultra durable roof that will last 20 plus years and collects power from the sun um, it's mostly applicable in Southern California, but at the reduced cost, it, it will be applicable for all of California uh, because they're required to for one reason. But um, most of the solar roof is economically advantageous for roughly 20% of the population right now. And in the next coming years, it'll be advantageous for 100% or 80% of the population. Um, I'm in a very rainy climate in Tennessee, East Tennessee, near the Smoky Mountains. Um, it might take a year or two for it to uh, beca become economical, perfectly economical for my area. But still, it's growing, growing, growing. Now, um, uh, let's see here. So with the solar roof, with the global internet, with the battery packs, I'll... With the battery packs, with the AC system that purifies your water and purifies your air, you're now getting to a way where you could have a remote house in the middle of nowhere and have all the luxuries of the modern world. And then the way that you get back and forth from your remote house is instead of having a road that goes back and forth, you drive a cyber truck or a similar type off-road vehicle and you just drive, you, you have to like cut down trees enough to where your cyber truck and the construction material can get in. But once that construction material can get in, you just drive your cyber truck back and forth and you never see, have to go to a gas station. You might never have to go to a city ever again, other than for medicine or something like that, like services that are necessitated in person. Um, and eventually I assume Elon will come up with an electric quadcopter to allow people to fly away from their house and not even have to cut down the trees to get home, to get their cyber truck uh, home. So what I think will happen is you'll have a little house, you'll have these things, you'll have um, your materials airlifted and dropped in, and then you'll have a quadcopter to get out of the woods, and then you'll go to your cyber truck and summon it from a park garage like you have a boat like a boat's parked at a, on the lake, you'll, you'll summon your cyber truck to, where, to your quadcopter landing pad, and then you don't have to have roadways. Because we need to reduce the human uh, footprint upon the earth. And the number one way to do that, 
one of the best ways to do that is to reduce is to reduce roadways via quadcopters. And another way to do that is to, if you spread people out of cities, then, and you don't have the pollution that gas produces, um, and you have a uh, full self-driving, which doesn't hit the deer and kill the deer and so forth, then you, I think you'll have a lot more animals, even with double population growth. That's what I think. Um, and at, uh, I didn't cover it earlier, but Tesla also reduced is, is vastly improving the power and reducing the cost of their batteries so that they, so that they can uh, power, uh, power vehicles on, they call it like a million cycle battery. Let me just take a, just a second of a break. This is why you do mountains, people. If you don't know, this is why you do mountains. Um, flat land doesn't do it for you like the mountains will do it for you. Climbing up the mountains, getting away from all the noise. You hear these creatures here? Maybe not. I doubt the phone picks it up, but um, more animals up here too. Because the animals naturally climb to the top of the mountain. Figured this out when I would like let my dog loose and see where it'd go. It would tend to go up to the mountain. Uh, just up to the top of the mountain. Um, so I think you see this with a lot of animals. So anyway. Um, so, so yeah, um, the batteries are like... Compared to where the batteries were, the batteries are roughly, they last five times longer, which they were already pretty good, but now they're lasting like one to three million miles, which basically means like 30 to 40 years, like 10 to 40 years. And um, the, they'll basically outlast the car, unless it's a Cybertruck, but they'll basically outlast the car at this point and can be swapped into a new car and then um, their cost has gone down about 50%, which basically means batteries are the best power generator in the world. And people think of power generators like nuclear power, solar, po uh, solar power, and wind power, but batteries actually produce power by improving the efficiency at which electricity is delivered. So, um, a, gr a great way to think about it is think about how when you want to listen to music, if you put earbuds in your ears, the, the music goes directly into your ear and none of it gets wasted uh, throughout all of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, making the entire earth like blast with your music. And your earbuds require a lot less power than uh, blasting all of the earth with your music. So today, when they ship power away from a plant, like a coal plant or a wind plant or a nuclear plant, they ship power in huge amounts of quantities that naturally gets wasted as it goes around. And it's um, you ship it at a very loud, loud volume. It gets quieter and quieter and quieter as it goes. And then... Um, it reaches a transformer where it increases in power again, and then it gets quieter and quieter as it goes till it reaches a transformer. And these transformers are difficult to maintain. Um, now, a battery works very similar, except they're much easier to install. Like you could have a battery at every telephone pole if you wanted. And, um, and then, that power level, instead of shipping huge, like uh, a big, a, bit, a loud volume of power, you ship a moderately quiet volume of power and the battery maintains a consistent level of strength as it travels down the line. And uh, uh, Australia has been kind of the leader here in purchasing Tesla batteries. And I don't know the exact numbers, but they paid like 300 million for a huge pack of Tesla batteries. And they found that they saved, I think they saved 500 million in the first year alone 
by converting a section of their, of their grid over to batteries. And that savings of 500 million is largely by creating a steady stream of power at the appropriate level, as opposed to, um, as opposed to barraging the network with highly amped power because there's, because the transformer situation, etc. So like a, a water tower, like a water tower collects water and then pours the water down. That's kind of what a transformer does. And then the difference with the battery is that it's incredibly small. Uh, one of the differences is it's incredibly small and can be uh, put all over the earth without much uh, issue. Um, Tesla is mining their own lithium ions. They, uh, they have improved and found a way to mine nickel and the other raw materials without destroying all of the earth and polluting the water sources. So I really love that. And I, I think it's very admirable and wasn't necessary, but I think very admirable of Elon to create source materials all the way from earth to battery, earth to Tesla car that don't uh, poison the well of the common water. And um, no, not everybody's doing that. Elon's one of the few people who's doing that. And it's one of the few people who can, who cares about sustaining a planet? Who cares about sustaining a planet? Now, long term, I've heard from some people that we will run out of lithium ions, and that's one of the reasons we need to get to Mars to mine the asteroid belt. I'll just leave that up to you. We'll probably get to Mars around 2030, 2040. We'll be mining that asteroid belt. Um, so I'm not concerned about it, but some people are. And I think that covers, I think that covers like, so just think about how the world is changing where you'll have one reserve currency of Bitcoin or something akin to this. You'll have a car that can drive itself all over the world and not kill people. And it'll work in China, England, where they drive on the opposite side of the road, road it'll work there too. All the different traffic lights, if you don't know, they use different traffic lights, different traffic laws. Mexico is probably the craziest. Mexico, at least years ago, instead of a, for a slow down sign, they'll show a turtle. And for a speed up sign, they'll show a rabbit. And that used to be the traffic lights forever in Mexico was turtles and rabbits, at least back in 2000. Um, and then, uh, cause you know, reading's not so hot. And then, um, so you'll have these safe transportation systems. You'll see a dramatic reduction in pollution, even as the population grows and grows and grows. And you'll see, oh gosh, raining may be hard this time. And you'll see uh, solar power being able to generate an independent living where people will be able to spread out into previously uninhabitable zones, but they'll be able to live there with this solar power, global satellite, global money uh, method. And they'll be able to go off the grid and pull themselves away from the clutches of the city, the clutches of the government, um, except for medical service. And that's about it. But you'll probably be so much healthier without all those pollutants entering your body that I wonder if you'll need a lot less medical service and all your like natural endorphins keeping you alive. And then also you might just wonder like, even though you have reduced access to medical care, the thrill of your life is just gonna be improved so much. So that's some changes in technology. Now for myself, I got this, you got the Zoom system and the remote work system, which people are getting into big time today. And I think uh, I don't support voting uh, anonymous, like voting by a ballot box. What I support is caucusing. And I want people to caucus over Zoom worldwide. And that's, that's my project, the Bitcoin 1776 project. And what I do is I have people um, 
get together in groups of eight. They talk to each other for an hour. I give you tokens for free after that hour. You, you uh, vote for the two people who are the best contributors, the, the two people who are like the least uh, jerks after the hour. And then, and you talk about health, technology, markets, whatever's important. And then um, I give them tokens. And then I try to buy the tokens back from you. And I give you 500 bucks when you get enough tokens. Um, each little meeting I pay out, I, it'll vary depending on how much money I have in my reserves. But I pay out like 200, 500 bucks per meeting, maybe $100 at start. But, um, so you get some real money. And if you want to participate in that, it's bitcoin1776.org. And uh, you can join the newsletter and follow up on the process. And then if you want to get my tax service, I charge $200 to $400. 200 for personal, 400 for corporates all across the U.S. And you can find me at B-A-R-N-E-T-T-E-C-P-A.com for my tax service, BurnettCPA.com. And then uh, I do investing over there too, where like I remote desktop, you keep the passwords and the logins. I never have access to any of that. All the tax forms and accounts are in your name. And um, my objective is to make about 100 to 200% a year. And uh, for that, I collect 10, I want you to pay me 10% of the profit. And if you want that, just find me at barnettcpa.com. And then if you want to support this YouTube making and the sharing of this like technology and so forth, uh, you can do my Patreon, share these videos. I very much appreciate it. And I think that covers everything. Uh, but yeah, think about how the world's becoming a world government, which is the next step that Elon doesn't want to worry about as far as I know. Um, I don't think he likes thinking about that, uh, the political process, but I've given it a lot of thought and I've come up with a political process that I think could at least initiate the transformation to the removal of the state and city system. I have like a very minor tax. I have a very minor objective of government, but there's no centralized government. There is, but there's not. All the money gets paid out to the people. The people make the change. And the only purpose of the, the main purpose of the centralized leaders is to say, hey, people, I want you to do this. I want you to study uh, programming. I want you to improve your health. And if you don't do th those things, that's on you. But these are the commandments that we think will lead to a better life for you. And it, you don't do it, that's fine. But um, if you participate in the government, you get money. And that's, that's like how I'm, that's the, that's the government. The government pays you to participate. Um, and if you want to support that, you try to buy the tokens from people to support it. I will never sell you my tokens other than the ones I bought from other people, perhaps. But I have a supply of tokens to give to people to participate, but I won't be selling those to you. I'll be using those to further the cause of uh, peace, well, global uh, prosperity. It's less about warfare. Warfare may be done. We don't know. It's 2020. October 2020 warfare may be done we don't know in the in the old ways of warfare but there's prosperity like the commandments that the Chinese and the Africans follow are not similar to the commandments that the Americans and the Mexicans follow and we need a similar type of compass that we can all use to um, improve our personal wealth our health increase our uh, happiness and family, um, our bondage, our bonding with other people, uh, sorry, not bondage, but our, uh, our communion, um, our collectiveness. And that's, that's what I'm doing or trying to do. And if you want to be one of the first movers, experimenters with that process, find me at bitcoin1776.org. Thank you very much. And we'll, uh, move on to the next video. So I'm walking the Appalachian Trail, Damascus, West Virginia, parked at Straight Branch 
I decided to climb up the mountain and I'll end up climbing back down. Um, been walking about three hours, honestly. Having a good time. Um, took a bath in the river. Took a poop on the leaves. Wiped my, wiped my bottom with the leaves. Covered the poop with a pile of leaves so nobody else steps in it. Played me a little guitar. Talked about, uh, talked about health. Talked about markets. Talked about tax. Talked about technology. So the last things I normally try to cover, so I won't end up recording my way back, I don't think. The last things, I might bibble babble, but the last things I try to cover will be, I believe, art. I haven't covered that. I haven't covered, I haven't told a personal story, <laughs> a fun story. And I'll give it some thought to see if I've skipped anything. Hmm. Oh, my notes are on my phone, so I can't look at my notes. I didn't have notes this time, printed. That was, uh, I like not carrying paperwork and being closer to nature. The camera's enough of a, a enough of a thing to be away from nature, but uh, having notes on your phone doesn't work, obviously, when you're recording a video. Um, hmm. Give myself a second to pause to gather my breath. Well, we have the privacy, I should tell. I should try to think of a, a story. Give me, give me some time. I got some stories, but I also make a purpose, a point to forget, to forget everything as soon as it happens, have no memory. 